outro cast. Uh, Kristen, thank you for taking the time. It's a pleasure to be speaking because I really like your wine on top of really liking the story. But those pleasantries aside, how's your day going so far? Pretty amazing. It's a beautiful day in Los Angeles. It's Friday. Um, where did you originally come from to wind up in Los Angeles? Um, I'm originally from Massachusetts, but I've lived all over the country. I originally lived in Northern California before making my way down to Southern California, where most of our wine is is from. So it yes. all comes full circle. Yeah, we see the Napa on some of the boxes and the packaging of the wine. But you come from a background of working with Michelin-starred restaurants. Did that go all the way back to Massachusetts? I originally started in restaurants in Massachusetts. I actually ended, I dropped out of Harvard Medical School to become a sommelier. And the way I even found myself in wine was I used to work on this little island called Nantucket, where mm -hmm. You know, Moby Dick is set. Um, it's where the one percent vacations and I waitress in the summer to pay for school out of pocket. Yeah. And so fell in love with wine there. Yeah, you have Nantucket out there. We have Fire Island here in New York. A oh. lot lots of different similarities with those kinds of things. But what I love about your brand, are you maxed out on compliments or you can No, still no, no. Keep them coming. It's been a okay. long but month. So Besides really enjoying the wine, I love things that are simultaneously highbrow and lowbrow. Like we are generally conditioned to think, oh, boxed wine, that's a joke. That's not good wine. But in your case, it is great wine. Same thing with canned wine. Now, how much of that was a necessity for packaging and costs versus just having a sense of humor about the whole thing? That's the entire ethos behind the brand. So I got the idea to start Nomadica when I was working at Osteria Moza here in Los Angeles, which is a one Michelin star restaurant, incredible 85 page yeah. Italian wine list. And Nancy, my boss, who's an incredible chef, Nancy Silverton, was on a Netflix show called Chef's Table for the first mm -hmm. time in my decade plus as a sommelier a different type of diner started coming in. And I noticed that they seemed really intimidated by wine, intimidated by just the presence of a sommelier. And I wanted to show people that great wine doesn't need to be expensive and make it really easy and accessible to have great wine no matter where you are. The reason that we're in cans and boxes is because, you know, my undergrad degrees in sustainable agriculture, that's really how yeah. I I bound my way into wine. I always say great wine is made by great farmers, but a sad reality of the business is that glass bottles are not really good for the environment. A majority of the carbon footprint in a bottle of wine comes from the glass bottle itself. They're not recycled in the US. They're highly energy intensive to produce and ship. And so we were the first people to put fine wine in sustainable vessels to not only reduce your carbon footprint, but as you said, be a little cheeky, have some fun with it, make it less precious, right? Wine's so serious. It is, but at the same time on that packaging, you have local artists on there, or I believe they're, they're local artists, which really makes it stand out because not only is the shape or the vessel different from the wine, but the artwork is upscale, or at least to at basic look, it's upscale. So when did you kind of realize in the process of not just having the packaging and the shape, but putting the art on there? So that we all know everyone buys wine based on the label. And so I, from day one, wanted to have a really beautiful label that would stand out on the shelf. And if I'm standing in front of you as your sommelier describing, you know, the winemaker's dog and the hillside that these vines are grown on, that wine's going to taste better. And so we wanted to use <laughs> art to do exactly that. So the yeah. art is actually a tasting note for the wine that's inside. And then in terms of the varieties, you know, white. Rosé, orange. Did you know outright that you wanted to name it general blend-based names as opposed to having pun-oriented names? The reason I'm asking that is because craft beer is all about pun names and pop culture references. And wine, I don't think, has gone in that direction yet. Well, natural wine certainly has. Like my dear friends who have an incredible winery in California called Wonderwork, they have some really fun names for their winery, like you know, bust in loose or born slippy, you know, fun things like that. But yeah. again, I wanted to just make it all about the quality of product. And the thing is, I talked to a lot of emerging consumers um, 
who are interested in wine, but didn't tend to find themselves drinking wine all the time. And I was like, you know, why are you drinking more orange wine than red and white wine? And they universally said, it's because you have to know something about white wine to choose whether you want a Sauvignon Blanc or a Chardonnay. You have mm -hmm. to do something about red wine to know if you want a Pinot Noir or a Cabernet Sauvignon. And we do, yes, we make a Chardonnay, but I really like fun varieties and I'd like people to try things. So by naming it white, orange, rosé, red, it's really easy and accessible. And then people, you know, they give me their taste impression before having a preconceived notion on what the wine tastes like. Sure. You said born slipping. If if my pop culture references are right, that's a song on the train spotting soundtrack, right? It is. That's they're gonna love that you uh you called that out. They're nerds. And, and the bust and loose, is that a Nelly hot in her, hot in here reference? You know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but the label art that they do is incredible. Their wines are amazing as well. Well, where I was going with that was are you a secret big music fan? Yes. Um, I was in bands growing up. Like I was in a riot girl band. <laughs> wait, wait, what? In Massachusetts? In Massachusetts. So were you playing TT the Bears in the Middle East? I was not that good or cool, but I really thank you for that compliment. No, I'm from Western Massachusetts and, uh, I don't know if you know the band Sonic Youth, but there's, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Thurston Moore had, um, an art center called flywheel that was just really amazing so it's you know western mass is two hours from boston and like very different culturally yeah boston but there's a lot of independent artists and a great music scene that's where the pixies met um in amherst massachusetts so lots of music history there when you say western do you mean more like we're stained and godsmack we're from because that's different than the smart smarty pants power pop uh, Boston scene that you were sounds like you weren't part of no not part of that and yes uh, Stained actually was from the town next door to where I grew up wow okay so the riot girl phase when did that end it's never ended it's still <laughs> happening I just you know have to look professional now but it's still in there so you're still listening to Bratmobile and Bikini Kill and that stuff Oh yeah. When, um, Bikini Kill reunited and did a tour, it was like right before the pandemic, I was like crying. My husband was making fun of me. I was screaming every song and Kathleen Hanna still has so much energy and is such an incredible yeah. performer, like obsessed with her. Yes. Well, where I'm going with all that is I find that probably one in three or four wine labels, spirit labels, et cetera, that are launched these days, at least there's a notable musician behind it. And it used to be that people were hiding that to seem more sophisticated, but the pretense has dropped in a very, very good way. So it's fantastic to see that your brand has the quality, the environmental policy, but also the sense of humor and cultural awareness around the whole thing. Did you initially have anybody telling you that it'd be a mistake to have the awareness and the humor? Yes. Every oh. one I know told me it was stupid to put fine wine into a can. Cause when we launched, it was mostly value driven utility wine, not something necessarily you want to pour into a glass and experience and enjoy and to put, you know, organically farmed, high quality, incredible juice into a can. I guess it's a little bit of that riot girl spirit. Well said. So some brands that you find the long-term goal is to have tasting rooms and merch and be a lifestyle, et cetera. And then there's other people go, no, we're good at one thing. We're going to keep doing that one thing. So looking ahead for Nomadica, which category or department are you in with all that? My, my goal for the next few years is to be everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I always think it's such a mistake that so many people go to see live music, go to sporting events and cannot get a decent glass of wine. Even when you're traveling across the country, certain hotels, it's impossible to get a great glass of wine. And this is because most people can't afford wine experts. They can't afford sommeliers. But my mission is to have Nomadica solve that problem. So whether you're, you know, at some hunter's club in Montana, you can have an incredible glass of wine or whether at your favorite venue or watching your favorite sports team. 
Got it. So when did you kind of realize that things were going to be fine with the Nomadica brand? And I say that as a compliment, because a lot of times when you start up a brand, you will first go, I'm not as successful as these people. Maybe I shouldn't have left the steady thing, et cetera. And there's usually a benchmark or a moment when you go, oh, this is where exactly where I needed to be. When did you kind of hit that point? I don't think I've hit that yet. I think, and I don't know if I ever will, you know, I was talking to a seasoned entrepreneur that I really admire and, you know, he sold his company for hundreds of millions of dollars. And I, I asked him that exact question. Like, when did you feel successful? When did you feel calm? And he was like, never. Hmm. Wow. Okay. You know, I, I thought that it would be a more simple kind of moment because yesterday, for example, when I was doing the freelance thing, I was reading the news and you see, oh, everybody's doing better than you. But I had this wonderful conversation at a bar and I went, this is where I should have been. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to be a simple answer like that, that, oh, uh, eight months ago, I met this one person on a flight while we were small talking. And I went, okay, that's exactly what I didn't want to do. So this is perfect. I think... I don't regret any of my decisions and I'm really excited about the future for Nomadica. I think we have a really bright and crazy trajectory. I mean, we're doubling our business next year, which mm -hmm. I don't know very many people in the wine industry who can say that. Um, but it's a big driver for me. I'm a little, I'm one of those people that's never satisfied, which, you know, I think, I think tough on a personal level, but great for business. Wow. Okay, well, one more question for you, and then I will let you go. And that's, you're working in industry where most people, it's their hobby. And you've turned a hobby into a career and a mission overall. When you're not busy with that, how do you decompress? What's the main hobby away from this career evolved hobby kind of thing that you call Nomadica? I think one thing I know about myself, and maybe this is because I'm from the East Coast, which I would say breeds a slightly more intense type of human um, to relax. I need like full immersion activities, like going backpacking and not having service and being, you know, miles into the Sequoia wilderness or something like tennis where you're really just getting the rage out. Getting the rage. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. You, you're, inspirational in that you again the highbrow lowbrow thing going on you you know maybe you could have given a lot to the medical world with your harvard training but at the same time doesn't it give the world more if you're inspiring good times and good foods with what you're doing i think now more than ever we need community we need a little lightness we need to be getting drunk with each other and laughing and like that's what i want to bring into the world Outro cast.